And this way of living is first going to manifest itself as we embrace the lowliness of Christ. As we embrace the lowliness of Christ. So this is how we kill our pride. We're lowly. <laughs> we make ourselves lowly. We humble ourselves. One of the reasons the disciples cannot understand what Jesus is talking about when he talks about the cross is because they don't have a category for it. <laughs> they don't have a category for the Messiah, the Christ, the King of Israel to suffer and die. That's, that's what the problem is. What, you're king, but you're going to die? How does that work? Kings don't die, the best ones. We don't, we don't rejoice, oh, the king died. No, long lives the king, right, is the chant. So what's all this dying business? I don't have a category for it. And that's so true for us, right? We struggle to have a category for suffering in our life, for weakness, even death. We don't understand how those things could, could fit in when Jesus says, I give you eternal life. <laughs> uh, you're going to be, uh, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you're going to have power. And we think glory, strength, might in human terms. We don't think about it as now you're empowered to take the gospel in every season of your life, every sphere of your life, to every place in this world, even if it costs you your life. <laughs> you're going to be empowered to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. We don't think about it like that, do we? We, 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 we put our sufferings in our categories, and, and don't hear me say we shouldn't pray that God would heal us or, or help us or get us through this tough time. But sometimes what way we need to be praying is that I might honor you through this. <laughs> Looking at it different. Because I am weak, I don't feel like I can serve you, but I know the, the Scripture tells me that when I'm weak, then I'm strong. We need to change our thoughts. And so this is the lesson the disciples are being taught by Jesus. As he co confronts them along the way in verse 33, he says, What were you discussing along the way? And I, I find this funny because they, dis they, they respond how my kids often respond when Sarah and I ask them, uh, who, who left the, the lights on? Who left the door open? Who left the milk out? Who left the pizza out? You know what response we get? Silence. <laughs> That's the sound of guilt, my friends. It's guilt. And that's exactly what the disciples do. He asked them, and verse 34, but they kept what? Silent. Uh-oh. <laughs> they knew. They knew, didn't they? They knew that Jesus would not approve of their conversation. And Mark gives us commentary. He says, why were they silent? Because on the way, they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. Jesus had probably overheard them. If he didn't overhear him, we already know he's, he's divine, he's God, he knows your thoughts and the intentions of your heart. So either way, Jesus knows, and they know Jesus knows, that they were arguing over this. I'm greater. No, 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 no. I'm greater. And, and maybe, you know, you think about just a couple of texts over, Peter, James, and John went on the Mount of Transfiguration. Might have been a little prideful for them. <laughs> Guys, I got something Jesus told us. Ask us to keep something secret. It's pretty big. Pretty big. But uh, you're just going to have to wait. You're just going to have to wait. I don't know how it went down. But probably there's some pride going on, jockeying for a position. And later we're going to see James and John. They're going to send their mommy to Jesus and say, Hey, can, can you ask him if we can be on his right hand and his left? This is all already beginning right here. And Jesus wants to kill this in them because it will kill the ministry, kill their souls. They're completely absorbed with themselves and how they can be great. And Jesus tells them that their way of thinking is upside down. Though we all have here in this room, I'm sure, different personalities, different goals. Uh, some of us are more ambitious 
than others. Still imagine we can identify with the disciples at some level. Perhaps you wonder, why am I not getting the opportunities that so-and-so is getting? Why haven't I been asked to serve in that way here in the church? Or maybe you're frustrated because your ministry that you lead isn't getting the attention you think it deserves, while another one is. Or possibly, we're hoping collectively that God will do such a great work in the midst of our church that we'll be the talk of the town. I don't know. It's easy to creep in. I can tell you even as your pastor, guess what? I want us to do well. I think the Lord is kind to us, and we are. But those things we have, I have to check my pride. Is this about me? And I want to encourage us to be asking ourselves, is this about me? 